always a pleasure to welcome to the show Diana Rickert. She's the VP of Communications with Illinois Policy. IllinoisPolicy.org, as I've uh, said time and time again. Bookmark IllinoisPolicy.org. Have that near the, the, the top and go to it every day because they put out so much really interesting stuff about what goes on in our state. Diana, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you on. You had a uh, you had a piece in the uh, Chicago Tribune. You write a monthly column for the Tribune. I read it religiously, and I and I really enjoyed the one from three days ago. Well, I guess enjoy is not really the right word. Uh, intrigued by it. I guess if I weren't a taxpayer, I could have fully enjoyed it. Uh, must be fun to be an Illinois lawmaker these days was the title of it. Uh, let's get into some explanation. Why would it be fun? Yeah. Well, you know, we have so many problems in Illinois. The politicians are always talking about raising our taxes to pay for these problems. And I took a look at what lawmakers were actually making progress on this spring. And the list was laughable. Um, the House passed a resolution to get this recognize and continue to defend the importance of bacon. Bacon the breakfast meat. <laughs> and, Wait a minute. Let's, let's get that again. Recognize and continue to defend the importance of bacon. Yes. And what was even more funny is that the sponsor of this resolution was talking about how it took him two years to pass this. He has been working for two years <laughs> to pass this. Um, th this is what he has spent two years on. And so, in fact, even on the day that they passed this, uh, one of the lobbyist groups in the state brought the entire House BLT sandwiches. And a lot of lawmakers were laughing about it. Oh, uh, how nice. But laughing, you know, laughing at our expense. <laughs> uh, another, another one that kind of caught my eye was the state has designated milkweed, the official state wildflower, and passed another bill um, in the House that said milkweed could not be considered a noxious weed, despite the fact that it actually is poisonous. So there was robust debate about this. Um, <laughs> and it, it actually is, uh, is, a, is a poisonous uh, plant. Um, there, there were a handful of others that kind of caught my eye, if I can indulge you guys. There was one that the lawmakers wanted to pass. Um, that would spend up to $1.5 million to translate part of the General Assembly website into Spanish. And literally while this debate was happening on the floor, another lawmaker went to Google Translate on their laptop and said, I just converted the website into 100, more than 100 languages all at once, all for free. So why are we talking about spending this money? That's literally astounding. When you when when you, when you boil that down, oh yeah, let's spend a million and a half dollars to translate parts of the state website into Spanish, or we could use Google Translate for no money whatsoever, and that gives us a hundred languages. Right for free, and um, <laughs> even though this measure then died, there was a lot of time and effort put into just getting it on the floor. Someone had to draft it. Someone had to review it. They had to start talking about it. They obviously went in price shop to figure out that it would cost one and a half million dollars. And, and so, you know, these things add up. There was another one that was just, it was laughable, just laughable. And there, there was actually like a 15 minute discussion on this just last week about whether we should make it state law to have a class in cursive in elementary and high school. And one of the reasons that the sponsor, uh, uh, Representative Chris Welch, gave was cursive helps a person establish their individual identity. This is about the kids and the future of our state. <laughs> you know, I've heard that used from everything from, uh, you know, baby formula to school funding, but I've never, ever heard this is for the kids attached to cursive writing. Yeah, and he gave, you know, he gave a lot of reasons. There's only so many that you can quote. One of them was that... If you know how to read cursive, then you can cherish a letter from your mother or your grandmother until the day you die. Um, that cursive is faster. That cursive helps you pass the bar exam, which you need to do in order to become a lawmaker. Um, that no one can read. Some other lawmaker was like, well, no one can read mine. Well, maybe we need this class because no one can read your cursive. And I couldn't believe this discussion that was going back and forth. Yeah, on a so, keyboard-driven society, let's make sure that we we allocate some funding for cursive. Right, and, you know, even having a class in high school, you know, I don't know that we necessarily need to have a state law for for people to be able to, to read it either or for it to be in school. But 
but it, it was it was laughable. Um, another one that was pretty interesting was they wanted to have a um, additional state holiday. August fourth would be President um, Barack Obama's day, recognizing his birthday. And so, you know, for all of us, for you, me, all your listeners. Nothing would really be different. We'd probably all go to work. There'd be a little thing on our calendar. But for state workers, they would all get this as their 14th paid state holiday, paid day off a year. And it would have cost us $3.2 million in holiday pay. Um, and fortunately, that one was next. But there was a big debate about how President Obama could not share a President's Day with the 40-some other presidents who preceded him. He needed his own day in Illinois. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I did appreciate the lawmaker bringing that up, saying, "Well, you know, once we get the Ronald Reagan Day done, let's talk about that." Right, right. Um, and then there were, you know, there were just a litany of other ones. Uh, apparently, elephant circus participation is a big issue in Illinois. There was a lawmaker who wanted to ban certain African and Asian elephants from being part of traveling circuses that come through the state of Illinois. They didn't want kids who are 18 and younger to be able to buy energy drinks. Um, there was even a law about parental bullying that if a parent knowingly embarrasses their child, that could be a charge of parental bullying. That could be a crime. Diane, I don't know if you I don't know if you're a parent or not, but so, the, the simple act of existence at times is embarrassing to your kids. I mean, in a in a child-run society, every parent would be behind bars, right? Oh, absolutely. I can't believe you wore those shorts to that school event. You embarrassed me. I had to call the authorities. Right, right. <laughs> um, and so you can just see they're not taking things seriously at all there. Um, and then the kicker, of course, is that right after, you know, like the cursive discussion, that was all last week, right after they wrapped this up, all the lawmakers went on their spring break, and they're not back in Springfield until April 25th. So that is how pressing our problems are in this state. Wow, you know, uh, you know, I, I didn't realize that you know cursive and elephants and milkweed were were such hot button issues. You know, I kept getting bogged down in rising property taxes, you know, a budget deficit, uh, things along those lines. Uh, things I guess I should have been paying attention to. Right, right. Um, so yeah, it's, you, we keep hearing that there's all this queer black and that you know there's. People that can't get along, they can't talk about the issues because they're not meeting in the middle. They're not even close to discussing what's remotely important in this state. And I think this is very illustrative of what they think of the pension crisis, the budget crisis, the fact that people's property taxes are so high that they're losing their homes. And that they're leaving the state, that we're leading the Midwest in outbound migration, which, by the way, uh, we, we've mentioned that several times on the show and always steered people back to your website on that one, IllinoisPolicy.org. You can read the complete details on how, you know, people are, are getting out of here as quickly as they can and not really all going all that far. They're, they're going to our neighbors. It isn't that we're losing everybody to the Sun Belt. No, but I bet it's because the state of Wisconsin... May have different thoughts on cursive writing, right? And milkweed. <laughs> I think so. Wisconsin rightfully ignores milkweed and really don't care what you do with cursive as long as you can <laughs> spell cheese in cursive. Um, <laughs> you had you'd pointed out, and I think this was a, a really interesting point here. Uh, with, they're doing all these other things. And, you know, the, the 7,000 plus units of government are driving up property taxes, making it too expensive to live here is what you wrote. And then you point out every few minutes... The state's pension crisis grows by $100,000. Yeah. So basically, in about, uh, in about the time that we've been talking, our pension crisis has grown probably by over a million dollars. Um, it's about every two and a half to three minutes, it grows by $100,000. And they're not doing anything about it. And they say, like, oh, we can't change pensions. The court says so. But there's a lot of things that they could be doing right now with regard to new employees, allowing anyone who's currently an employee to get on a 401k if they so choose. And they're not doing anything. And literally, the debt is racking up every single minute that they're not doing anything or that they're talking about stupid stuff like this. You, uh, you conclude your piece by saying with each passing month, it's becoming clearer that the current crop of elected officials isn't up to the task of fixing our state. They don't need more time. We need new elected officials. That's right. You know, they keep saying, I keep hearing this refrain, we might not have a budget until after the election. Um, and, of course, they're, they're alluding to the election with Governor Rauner and hoping that a Democrat will get in or maybe even a Republican 
um, who is more aligned with the Democrats. And so my thinking, and I think the thinking of a lot of taxpayers in Illinois, is like, yeah, maybe we won't have a budget until the election. When we vote, you clowns out. Which would, you know, it would be nice. I'd love to see that make headlines around the world that the, you know, entire state government uh, replaced by angry, uh, by angry citizenry. Chances of that happening probably somewhat slim because it seems like the people who are really controlling the levers uh, are firmly entrenched, at least in their own districts. Yeah, I think that's the thing is it takes a long time for us to peel back all of the power that they have instilled in the math process, the way the electoral politics works, the way a candidate gets picked to run in a district. But I think we're getting closer, um, but it's going to take us a little bit longer um, to be able to do that. But the more light that we can shine on these things and say, like, hey, guys, what are you doing? I think that they'll, they'll be responsive and they'll feel a little bit of pressure from us. And as I've pointed out before, one of the great things about Illinois policy is you guys are, are wildly critical of things that go on down in Springfield and some of the moves that they make, and rightfully so. But you also offer solutions. It isn't just a, a critical forum. Uh, the very first thing I'm looking at on your website this morning, Budget Solutions 2018, balancing the state budget without tax hikes. That's right. If these guys are going to be fooling around on stuff like bacon resolution and cursive, somebody needs to show them. How do you balance the budget without raising taxes? How do you enact property tax reform? How do you fix the pension problem? And we have all of those ideas there. And a lot of these ideas are bipartisan. They've been talked about. The problem is getting the lawmakers to focus and actually talk about them or actually bring them up on the floor instead of this type of stuff that they're busy with. Yeah, and if they're going to, it should all be written in cursive, at least, I would think. Yeah, if anybody can read it, right? If anybody can read it. Well, and if, and if you drip your BLT on it, then it's hard to read as well. I can see where the problems would, would, would follow with that. She's, yeah. <laughs> she's Diana Rickard. She's VP of Communications with Illinois Policy, IllinoisPolicy.org. Put that on your bookmark list. You'll be glad you did. Diana, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day for us. Thanks so much for having me. Take care.